Hello YouTube, this is Teletech Computers, your host Charlie. Today I will show you how to install a hard drive into this HP Pavilion Desktop 510A010. It has a little bit of view here. There we go. Yeah. Um, I got this case of, say, the scroll computer with the Passfly keyboard and mouse for 20 bucks. But the system didn't come out with a hard drive. So, it says on the specs that it has a one terabyte hard drive in it. So, I went to, I went to the liquor store, picked this up for 20 bucks. And I'm about to install it inside this tiny little light case. This case, this pretty much still computer weighs about five, eh, about five, six pounds tops. So it's not too bad. Get the thumb screw off. There we go. What we need for this task is a Phillips screwdriver. Four screws for hard drives. You can tell by ah, got no nails. <laughs> tell by the rivets on the side. If I can like focus, focus. But yeah, you get the idea. So set this thing. Anyway, you get into the thumb screw that you see here. You slide the side bar off like so. Put out the side because you don't need it for now. So, here's the inside of the computer. There's your AMD quad core. It's the one I soldered to the board, so you cannot upgrade it unless you have a very good experience of desoldering and resoldering processors, which I do not. So, I'm not going to bother. Um, but yeah, so. Take your hard drive. As you can tell, it has four, four holes that you use for screws. So mount to this because you gotta line up the um, screw holes with the uh, hard drive. Next up, you slide it in like this. You line up the holes. Next up. You take two screws, do one at a time. You thread them in first. Take your screwdriver, tighten them down. So that now with this particular case. Unfortunately, to get to the other two screws, is that scene inside here. And by the judge of how the scene looks, you can actually take this whole thing out to make it easier. And apparently, you need a torque bit, so give me just a second. Grab my little handy dandy tool set. You find those at Walmart, it's like five dollars. So that's good. It does have my negative ability though, but it works just as good. So pop out. That yeah, maybe I have the right size, maybe I don't. Nope, not that size. Time to go bigger. Nope. Nope. I think I found the right size. Yep. So let's get this side panel out. Just three screws, it's not too bad. The bit I'm using is T10, if anybody's wondering. Uh, 
those two. And then the last one. Move the SATA cable out of the way. And voila. Comes out. Now you guys wonder what this is for. I assume this is for an SSD drive or two and a half inch drive. But since we got three and a half inch, we're using this. Now we've got the O2 screws for you and your screwdriver, which is mine is magnetic. You fasten down the last two screws to the hard drive, like so. Yep. Now you can attach your power cable now if you want to, like so. So you get your sight. I don't know if you guys see this too well. So you got your SATA cable here. This is your power cable. This is your data cable. You can tell about the difference in size for starters. And the buffs like and um, what's really interesting, the buffs are like L's. So we size back in place. See these little grommets here? They slide in this little hole right here. So you got one on both sides. So you slide that in place, like so. Take your torque screws and tighten them back down. Since my little screwdriver is not magnetic, I'm going to thread them. Just a little bit to make it easier. That way I'm not fighting with it. So to speak. And pretty much that's how easy it is to put a hard drive into this HP case. I do suggest having a magnetic screwdriver for torque, but apparently I don't have that at, at the moment. Because I'm cheap. <laughs> Plain and simple. Yeah, you can go out and buy an iFixit uh, set for, what is it, 20, 30, 40 bucks? Whatever version of set you want. Or you can just do a cheap route and get mine for like $5. If you really want to make this magnetic, all it takes is some copper wiring and a 9 volt battery to make it magnetic. It's not that hard. And to do that, you just wrap around the coil, connect both ends to a battery. You can use copper wire, spiegel wire, whatever wire you want to use to make a homemade magnetic, electric magnetic screwdriver. Now, once it gets enough magnetic charge, it will stay magnetic for a given amount of time before I have to redo it again. But like I said, it's not that difficult. But there you have it. Want to have my driver installed? Now we can, now I can reinstall Windows on here, and yeah, and go from there. The only thing I wish this case had was, well, not the case, but the board itself, a P-size press slot maybe for like you know, and added um, we're well not so much a video card, but for like an expansion card, like maybe an SSD. X4 card or something like that. Because this um, motherboard only has two SATA ports, so you can't really add any more drives. So, but like I said, it probably wasn't meant for that, but it's kind of foolish, in my opinion, to have two expansion bays on the back of the case. HP probably does save money, which is cool, but you get the idea. Oh, there you have it. Now you go to your side panel and you line up these little lock pins with the holes on the case. And these will slide in and lock up here. And that is it. That's how easy it is to pretty much install a hard drive into this HP machine. And if you guys are curious on the specs, if you guys couldn't read the specs through the blinding light above my head, again, there's an HP Pavilion Desktop 510. That's A010. It's an AMD Quad Core A8 7410 processor. 8 gigs of DDR3 low, oh, DDR3L, which means low latency, low power. System memory. I know the technical term for it, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Now we have the one terabyte hard drive in it finally. It has Radeon R5 graphics built into the processor. That serves the same RAM. And also some tray multi super multi DVD burner. So you have multiple options to burn DVDs. 
Plain and simple. And it has a wireless LAN 802.11a slash b slash g slash n slash ac. Baffle. And a 1x1 and Bluetooth 4.0 m.2 combo. So that's not too bad. I'm not surprised it has A on it because, yeah, A is like super freaking old. But it's all good. It's kind of funny. It went from A, B, then skipped C, and then went to F, you know, all those letters, and went straight to G. Then eventually straight to N. It's hilarious. So, the keys on the front of the panel. You have your SD card reader, two USB ports, headphone jack. And DVD burn. The faceplate was broken when I got the case, but it's the snap on is actually very hard. It's kind of broken, so I had to get me another one for a different drive. You get the power button on the back of the case. You have your power supply, fan, or oh, it's not a very power supply. Sorry, it's exhaust fan, Ethernet. USB 2.0, 3.0, HDMI, VGA. Then you got your microphone, headphone, and line out cable, or line in cable ports. So all your necessary audio equipment. It doesn't have a whole lot like your normal desktops do, but it works. And then right here is your power adapter, plug in. And my next video with this machine, I'll give you guys a demo of what it's capable of and what it can do. Thanks for watching. You guys take it easy. Peace.